So let's move on to the solution. So this problem essentially is finding the potential inside of a uniformly charged sphere. So once again, the way we do that is that we add up the individual contributions from each point of the sphere. So this time, because it's a, a solid sphere that's uniformly charged, we're going to have to use a triple angle. And using the formula for potential, we have these constants times the amount of charge, so the charge density, times a tiny unit of volume. So this term that we usually have in spherical coordinates. And then since we're using the formula for for potential, we're going to have to divide this expression by the distance from the point we're evaluating to the point that we want to measure the potential. So I'm going to call this length eta. So it's just a symbol. So what is eta going to be equal to? So we can actually use the cosine law. So eta squared is equal to r squared, so this length over here, plus l squared minus 2rl cosine of theta. So just to remind you, in our case, l is the distance of the point that we're, that we're trying to measure, the potential. So the distance from that point to the center of the sphere. So we get this expression. So for our integral, the denominator, we're going to have something like this. And then for the bounds of the integral, since we're drawing out a sphere, so it goes from 0 to r, 0 to pi for theta, and 0 to 2 pi for phi. So first step, let's just get, a, get rid of the phi terms, because there are no phi terms inside, so we can just multiply this thing by 2 pi. So this cancels out with the 4 pi we get, uh, 2 epsilon. And I'm just going to pull the constant out, so uh, the density. So we're left with something like this. And at this point, it's still rather, it's still a rather ugly integral. So the way we solve this is that we're going to, have to break it up into two steps. So for the first step, we can actually rearrange this integral into something like this. So I'm going to do the, the th I'm going to integrate the theta uh, term first. So I can just pull the r squared out. Need to just separate the terms like this. So for the first step, I'm going to integrate this expression that I have inside with respect to theta. So I'm going to integrate this expression inside this bracket first. So let's do just that. So I have 0 to pi. So wait, wait, I'm, I'm just going to do the substitution directly. So what we want to substitute is that we want to let u be equal to r squared plus l squared minus 2rl cosine of theta. And then so for the substitution, du d theta is going to be equal to negative 2rl negative sine theta. So these cancel out the negative signs. So we know that du is equal to 1 over 2rl is equal to uh, sine theta d theta. So this term sine theta d theta is going to be equal to du divided by 2 rl. So for our integral, it's going to turn into something like this. So for the sine theta d theta, we're going to get 1 over 2 rl du. And then for the denominator, this term is going to be equal to u. So we get a square root of u. And for the, for the bounds, when the theta is equal to 0, this essentially becomes r minus l whole square. So we get r minus l whole square. And then for the upper bound, when you substitute with pi, cosine of pi is equal to negative 1. So you get r plus l whole square. So you get r plus l whole square. And then don't forget to write the rest of the symbols. So we have an r squared, and then we have a dr here. So to evaluate the integral on the inside, so you see that these are just constants, so I'll just pull these out first. So when we're doing it in terms of du, those are just constants. 
So on the inside we have a 1 over square root of u. And then if you integrate that, that's going to be equal to square root of u times 2. And then it's going to go from r minus l squared to l plus l squared dr. So uh, you see that the 2's that cancel out, so I'll just get rid of that. One of these r's that cancel out. So I'm, going to, I'm also going to pull the l outside for convenience. So we have an r here from here. And then so substituting the upper and lower bounds in, we have an r plus l square and the square root, so that's just r plus l. And then for the r minus l square square root, uh, this is always going to be positive, because if you square something first, it's going to always be positive, and then you, once you do the square root, it's always going to be something positive. So I just I can't just get rid of the square term, so it's going to turn into something like this. I'm going to have to use the absolute value symbol. And so to evaluate this integral, I'm going to have to break up the bounds of the integral into two parts. So there are two cases. So I'm going to consider from 0 to L first. So from 0 to L, R is going from 0 to L. So that obviously is something that's smaller than L. So from 0 to L, this expression is going to turn to L minus R, because it's going to, you're going to have to flip the sign to positive. So when R is smaller than L, it's going to, this, this expression here is going to turn into this. And once you, uh, once you put this expression back into uh, the integrand that we have here, you see that you get a minus L plus R. So we have a 2R squared. And then going from L to R. So going from L to R, you see that uh, this expression here is going to be positive. So it's just going to be R minus L. So uh, combining it with this expression here, you get a minus r plus l, so you get r times 2l dr. So at this point, this becomes rather easy to solve. So we have these constants out here. And then for this integral, that's going to be equal to 2l to the power of 3 divided by 3. And then for this integral, it's going to be 2l times so r is going to be equal to r squared divided by 2. And then we're going to evaluate it from r to l to r. So we get r squared divided by 2 minus l squared divided by 2. So at this point, you can say that we're essentially done. So all we have to do now is to simplify the expression that we have. So these 2s, thankfully, they cancel out. So we have an l r squared, so minus l to the power of 3. This cancels out with this, so we get negative. 1, 3, l to the power of 3. So just a bit of further simplification. And also one last step is that in the question we're not given this charge density. So we can't use this symbol here. So we're going to have to use the symbol Q, so that's the total amount of charge. And it's related to the charge density by this, this formula, so the volume times the charge density. So which means the Greek letter rho is going to be equal to 3 q divided by 4 pi r to the power of 3rd. So I'll just substitute that in. So 1 over 2 epsilon. And then here we have r squared minus l squared divided by 3. So you see that uh, I'm just going to pull out the r squared. So this becomes a 1. So there's an r squared here, and uh, these cancel out, so we have just 1r. I'm going to combine these into an 8, so I can just write this as q divided by 8 pi epsilon r. So q, 8 pi epsilon r, and then I'm going to multiply the 3 inside just to get rid of this 3. So we get 3 minus l squared over r squared. So this is a nice expression. So this is the answer.